Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Poultry Health Today, and with me is Dr. Manuel da Costa. He is associate director for Outcomes Research at Zoetis. Manuel, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Joe. Now, over the last five years or so, coccidiosis vaccination has really gained a lot of traction in the poultry industry. And it initially started as a means of giving the medications a rest, but with more and more operations going antibiotic free, you've got operations that are using this vaccine or the vaccines year round. That's true. Over the past years, uh, coccidia vaccine was used extensively in the industry, and uh, it used to be used to, um, to kind of rest some of the medications used for coccidia, but uh, nowadays, regardless of the, the season, they're actually being used uh, continuously in the production season, mainly due to ABF uh, systems. Vaccines can work great. They especially shine, I think, in the summer months when you have less pressure but there are sometimes a year when they need some help. Yeah, so with vaccines, there, there are some challenges that come with vaccine. Um, specifically, uh, delivery method of vaccine can, can be a little bit cha challenging uh, with the uh, uneven uh, administration of the vaccines. And also, uh, during some phases of the year, it can be associated with uh, some other um, secondary diseases, necrotic enteritis. So it can be a, a factor that can impact some of the necrotic enteritis uh, uh, rates on the flocks. And, um, and with the ABF system, where we don't have antibiotics, uh, there's a need to, uh, to reassess the, the role of vaccines on the, the coccidia control. So now, as I understand it, you are doing some research with what you call bio shuttle programs. Mm -hmm. This is where you start with a vaccine and come back with a medication, presumably a few weeks later. How does that work? So bio shuttle uh, is a concept that came uh, in the past years where you would introduce a vaccine at uh, day of hatch to the broilers. And then around the second week, uh, you would cut this vaccine on the peak of the, the vaccine with, uh, used to be done with an uh, ion or other uh, anti-coccidial drug. Um, and therefore that allows birds to develop immunity and would spare some late cycling of the, of the coccidia and the likelihood of developing uh, necrotic enteritis would be reduced. Um, I'm just it confused on one point though because I, I can remember telling people that well if you're going to vaccinate birds you better not you better make sure that there's no medicated feed that goes into that broiler house because you're going to kill the vaccinal oocysts that come with the vaccine. Uh, you're saying that's not a problem anymore? It's not a problem if you introduce the vaccine at later stages, right? So uh, at the you, vaccine or the, the medication? Vac the medication. Yes. So if you vaccinate uh, broilers and then uh, you give them enough time for them to develop immunity, then you can eventually uh, cut this uh, vaccination, the challenge, and therefore birds will have enough immunity to respond to a later uh, challenge and uh, you can control the, the, vac the vaccine spread, let's say, uh, on the later stages with the medication. As long as you guarantee that you don't introduce the medication at early stages and allow the birds to develop uh, enough immunity, you should be good. Okay, and if it's an antibiotic-free production system, they can't use ionophores because it is technically a type of antibiotic, so they have to use what you call non-ionophore anti-coccidials. Let's call them coccidiostats. Um, how are they being used in bio shuttle programs? That's that's a target of our research recently, where we, um, we've been testing to do this bio shuttle uh, system using the, the anticoxidials, non ionophore uh, anticoxidial uh, feed additives, where they are allowed in the ABF system. So uh, our uh, thinking is that when we introduce uh, these feed additives, we can cut effectively the peak of the oocysts at uh, around two, two, three weeks of age, and um, it would still allow the birds to develop the immunity. And when we completely shut down uh, the coccidia cycle, uh, birds would still respond. Uh, and in the eventually, when they face a necrotic enteritis challenge, they, they can uh, have some beneficial effect from that uh, non iono 4 anticoccidial drugs. Okay, so Manuel, um with these antibiotic-free production systems in mind, you recently did some trials that involved both the vaccine and these non-ionophore anticoccidials. Uh, tell me about the trials. What were you looking to accomplish? So our hypothesis was that uh, when uh, birds are coxy-vaccinated, uh, we could reduce um, 
the mortality rate and uh, medication usage when we uh, introduce birds uh, with a non iono 4 anticoxidal drug Cretis vaccine around two weeks of age. Um, so what we did, we, um, we had birds vaccinated and um, later at two weeks of age, we introduced them with different uh, non iono 4 so Zoline, uh, Zomix, Robens, um, Decox, and we compared with BMD and uh, non-infected control. And what we did observe was that uh, when birds um, are exposed to these feed additives, uh, the anticoxidial uh, feed additives, the mortality rates were significantly reduced in comparison with, uh, with the birds that were uh, without uh, any feed additive on the diets. When we introduce these, uh, these feed additives, we are sparing the birds on the late cycling of the, of the coccidia. So therefore, we're controlling the damage that uh, has been done in the, in the gut. Therefore, you know, we can reduce the severity of the lesions in the, in the, um, the gut walls and therefore reduce the mortality rates that we observe in these birds. How did you measure the success of each medication? In the, this specific trial, uh, our, our responses were performance in terms of body weight and feed conversion and also what we were really interested in was to see uh, the severity of the necrotic enteritis lesions and mortality. Um, ABF uh, system, uh, they really put value on sparing mortality and medication usage and uh, mortality was definitely affected by the feed additives used. We did see that uh, when these non iono 4 anticoxial drugs were introduced, mortality was significantly reduced when compared with birds that didn't see any feed additive. Uh, in addition, it was interesting to observe that uh, this mortality was kind of a reflection of what we observed when we performed necropsies on the birds, uh, where birds that were uh, uh, on these feed additives, they had uh, less severe lesions in comparison with birds that uh, had no, were the control birds, had no, no feed, additive, feed additive added to the, to the diets. Okay, so that's how you were measuring the medications. When you looked at the ones that were involved, what was the bio shuttle program that seemed to stand out in your mind? Uh, while looking to our results, definitely Zoomix was, pro was the one that performed the, the best uh, and when we compare with the other ones followed by Roban. So we observe a reduction of, uh, in the percentage of birds that, uh, that died from, um, from uh, necrotic enteritis. And also, he also spares some feed conversion points when we compare with the, with the control uh, diet. Uh, and, uh, and we did see uh, that uh, this, the lesion scores in the gut from necrotic enteritis were reduced when we had Zoomix added to the diet. Uh, as, and likewise, with, uh, with Robans and Decox, we also did see this effect, but not to that uh, great of extent as, as we did see with Zoomix. One other question about these types of coccidia stats. I know that if you overuse them, mm -hmm. they can develop resistance pretty quickly. Uh, and now, I know you said that having the vaccine and then followed by zoeline produced the best results in this trial. That might be different in a, on another day at another time of year. Um, so is there a place for all of these uh, coccidia stats that can be used in bio shuttle programs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So uh, you, you're, you're, about, you're, you're right. Uh, there's, a, there's a risk of developing resistance with, this, um, with these feed additives. Uh, what we have to be cautious is that we guarantee that we have a rotation program using various um, anticoxidial drugs that we guarantee that uh, you know we put a drug for one, two, three cycles depending on the feed additive that uh, we're talking of and uh, that way you guarantee that you're not burning out uh, a tool that might be useful for you in the, in the future. Mm -hmm.